What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Tony D2 Wild, checking in once again. Tony Digital bringing back another 4K visual, back with another banger today, guys, on this year's 2020 top 10 sneaker pickups. Now, I just said that really, like, odd backwards. Yeah, top 10 sneaker pickups of 2020, but we're going to let that ride. Guys, if you haven't already, go and check out my sneaker collection video, man. It's live. Every single one of you in the comment section has been asking for it, and it is finally here. Just go get some popcorn. Go get something to sip on, something to smoke on, something to drink on, whatever you got to do, because it's an hour and 36 minutes. And I would appreciate if you watched that full thing through. There might be a sequel leading into next year. You feel what I'm saying? But yes, guys, go and check it out. The link to that will be down below in the description, and enjoy. But... It can't be a 2020 without doing the top 10 sneaker pickups of 2020. So, without further ado, man, let's get straight into it, man. Let's rock. Right. Coming in at number 10, guys, this shoe, I had to put this on the list because it is, it's been the, the all-around banger this year. I probably worn this shoe the most out of any other shoe and you, you kind of let the shoe kind of just slide by without giving it the respect that it's due. And also it released really early in the year on January 22nd for $190. And that shoe is the Jordan 4 Black Cat. The Jordan 4 Black Cat has been a phenomenal shoe for me this year. I've worn it pretty much every single wear, shape or form and it has held up magnificently. It's all black, the Black Cat, you already know what it is. All blacked out. We don't got the black cake on the back of the tongue. We've been waiting on the three for a very, very long time. Hopefully, we'll get that three. We have the Pure Money fours, and now we have the Black Cat fours. Hopefully, we get the Pure Money threes and the Pure Money fours down the road. But this shoe right here, man, it wasn't on my list initially when I was, but I was going through, and I'm like, what have I really been rocking the most, you know, and, and showing the most respect to? And I was like, bro, these black cats, I pretty much just slip these things on. I don't even lace them up. I just sl slide my foot in them, and I'm ready to go. And they've been through me, rain, sleet, or snow, whatever I gotta go, you know, and you just, I mean, they're black. You can match them with anything, you feel me? So I gotta give the respect when the respect's due on the Jordan 4 Black Cat at number 10. Coming in at number nine, guys, we have here a pair of Yeezy 350 V2s, and these are the Yeezy 350 V2s Carbon. Releasing on October 2nd, retail $220. This is the Yeezy 350 V2 that I got through the eBay Authenticity Guarantee app. This shoe has probably been my favorite Yeezy 350 release of this shoe. This is the only Yeezy 350 that made the list. And this is probably my favorite one of this year. Honestly, just it's been so overwhelming of so many different colorways and colors of the Yeezy 350 that i just been kind of bored and I kind of just stopped really copping like that. 380s, 700 V3s, I'm all for it. The 350 itself, though, I have enough in my collection now. Reading Rainbow, I have the Rainbow in my possession. Now, I don't really need that much more. I honestly didn't need these, but the colorway, the carbon, the Asriels, as they were originally called, but then switched over because of the name itself. These have been probably one of the best Yeezy 350s. Well, in my opinion, it is the best. That's why I picked it up of 2020. That black, that carbon A1 steak sauce with that bottom. You cannot go wrong in this weird new lacing system that Yeezy now has in their possession. It is what it is, man. This is number nine, though. The Yeezy 350 V2 Carbon Gilligan Nut Sats, Mr. Howe, man. Straight up. Coming in at number eight, we have to put this iconic model on the list no matter what. You know I always give it up to the OGs, the classics, when it comes to Jordans and their releases each and every year. And in 2020, I make no exception. And with that one, we have the Jordan 13 Flint. The Jordan 13 Flint released on May 30th of this year. The retail price point was $190. I doubled up on this. I bought a pair myself, and then I think Champs had sent a pair, and we did a humongous giveaway on this sneaker. The 3Ms. Everything, the leather, the quality, the build, everything about this shoe hit on par to perfection in my opinion. They did not mess up on anything. There's no glue. There was no cuts that were wrong. They just banged this one out of the park. For, you know, to, to, the, to the bread 13s that released three years ago or whatever, I think two, three years ago, the bread 13s and uh, the He Got Games are decent as well. But the flints, it seemed like they just got it right when it came to this shoe, man. The build, everything about it, the side panels, feel like zebra chin straps just wrapped around and like a oil baked base baked beans and they cooked it for like maybe three to four hours and they let that shit sit in the crock pot and it just 
it fell off the bone, man. I mean, it's just a magnificent shoe. You, you look, I mean, look at that. You see that sh that chin strap? It's magnificent. But yeah, man, number eight, the Flint 13. It could have been a little bit higher, but there's a lot of more bangers that ended up taking my mind off of this. But this was one of the most anticipated shoes going into 2020. Like one of my, I'm pretty sure I could find a video down the road. I'll probably go watch it later on. I might do that on my secondary channel, react to my most anticipated shoes that it released this year and see like where that fell into now. You know what I'm saying? Because our, our minds always going to change. But this one's still on the list at number eight. Coming in at number seven, guys, this one probably struck a lot of us off guard. Like, we didn't know nothing about this shoe. Well, we knew something about this shoe, but we didn't know the full details of it. And we'll get into that a little bit later about this shoe. And this one's number seven. And this is the Jordan 1 Mocha. Now, the Jordan 1 Mocha released on October 31st. Retail was $170. And what I was basically saying that when I first saw pictures of a Mocha releasing, it was like a, it was like mocha back here and then mocha like here as well. There was no like black toe type of ordeal. It was all mocha out right here. Um, everything was mocha, you know what I'm saying? It was like a Chicago one, but they switched it to brown. But we ended up getting this. And this just hit phenomenally. It did crazy numbers and people went insane for it. A lot of people like it just because of it being brown. And I would not lie, I'm gonna stand on my 10 toes when I say this. I like this shoe because of the colorway. Nothing to do with the fact that it looks similar to a Travis Scott one. I love brown. I just love brown. I've always loved brown. I think I look good in brown. You know what I'm saying? It's just been a color that I've always loved. And when I saw this and I saw that suede in the back, I fell in love with it. And the suede, new butt, whatever you want to call it, is just straight buttery scotch pancake patty melt biscuit pussy poppers. Yes, I said it. I'm back, baby. But the quality was just great. You know, the buttery... On the, on the ones, on the toe box, everything about it, the quality was phenomenal. So I had to give it up to them. And like I said, going into 2020, this was never gonna be on my list and nor did I know anything about it. This shoe just came out of nowhere and just slapped a lot of us in the face. Slapped us completely off guard. And it's here, man. It's gotta be one of the top for a lot of us out here. Unfortunately, it didn't make that top 10 sneaker releases list and it probably could have. It probably should have been an honorable mention in my opinion now that i think about it but i still feel like the list i did i could stand on it if anything if it was like a top 15 list this would definitely made it top 20 definitely made that but jordan one mocha it's one of my favorite pickups still they don't have to be the best release of the year to still be my favorite pickup you feel me coming in at number six we finally got this shoe this year and it's been something that's been anticipated for me for quite some time so when i got my hands on them for a phenomenal price point, pretty much retail shipped, huge shout out to Gordon, I was ecstatic. And that is the Yeezy Quantum Basketball. Releasing during All-Star Weekend this year, February what, 16th, $250. I was in Chicago at the time, but I was busy doing a lot of things with Panini. Huge shout out to the family over at Panini. And I was unable to get my hands on these prized possessions, you feel me? But the shoe itself, phenomenal, the build. We've known about this shoe for about three years now. And finally getting it in hand and possession, it was a game breaker for me. I can't lie. It's not the best looking shoe from the side. Like, and that's mainly where people would see it from. The front, it looks magnificent. But I don't know. Like, I like it. I just like the shoe overall. The build, the comfortability. Now, this is a size 8. I had to do what I had to do. I had to do it. I mean, Gordon didn't want to sell me. He had a 9. I wanted the 9. These run pretty snug. And these are taking a lot of toll on my feet to break in. But... We are getting there, we're getting there. It's definitely though a great shoe that I'm happy to have in my possession. I wasn't even able to get the review. I think I did a pickup, but I never did a review because I got it so late. But the quality, the build, everything about it, the craftsmanship is A1. This is one of the shoes though that I really am not a fan of any of the other colorways that have came out. I feel like this shoe just looks great in its OG colorway. The silver, the black. I don't know if I'm gonna ever get another color, another, another colorway. I don't, they might, they just gotta do something totally different to make me want to do that because I've seen like the blue ones, the green ones, they all look just so similar to this one. It's like the same thing with it, it's changed this. It's like getting a Jordan 10, you know, powder blue steel and then a red, it's just like, I don't know, I guess it's like a 13, the cherry 13. Then you get a blue, white and blue 13, a white and red, a white and yellow, a white, I'm, I'm like, I have enough of that. And I know this sounds weird when I have a ton of those in the ones, but the ones just hit different. The ones are just different, but these, I don't know. Maybe I'm just contradicting. Let me just shut up, man. Coming in at number five, we have ourselves here a Jordan 5. 
And this Jordan 5, oh, almost fell, almost dropped it. It's the Off-White Jordan 5. The Off-White Jordan 5 released on October 29th, and this is in this specific colorway. Now we've seen the black one, which I think released like February 15th. It was during All-Star Weekend as well. But we have here the Off-White and the Cell. This is the favorite out of the two for me personally. And I recently got these through the eBay app once again. This shoe though, the quality, the build, the look, the rip stop, everything about it, I love it. I love fives in general. So throwing that type of, eh, that Virgil sauce on it, pause, nope. We're not saying pause anymore in 2020. So y'all can go, on uh, 2021, we're not saying pause no more. So y'all can go run with the weirdo stuff in your brain cells. Pause is dead in 2020 for me. So yeah, overall, I just, I just like the shoe, the five itself and everything about it. Then you had this, I mean, you just couldn't really go wrong. So I had to add this one to the arsenal and I'm happy I got it to the arsenal. And it's definitely one of my favorite pickups of this year. I like this one more than the black one. It is what it is. And I'm the same guy who at the same time gets very upset of all the sale colorways that are releasing. So I guess I'm contradicting myself a little bit, but hey, sue me. Number five, Off-White Five, man. Stay alive. Coming in at number four, man, I remember when I unboxed it or picked it up or whatever I did initially when I talked about it, I said that this shoe was gonna make it to this list. And I'm glad that it has stayed and made it to this list after this long, long years and all these sneaker releases, it still stays on this list. And that shoe at number four is the Jordan 3 UNC. The Jordan 3 UNC released on March 7th. Yeah, yeah, March 7th, retail price point was $190. And the buttery smooth, this pancake sauce, goddamn chihuahua, flatulence ju juices, spread open with spam cheese biscuit sauce. Quality is this impeccable and immac immaculate. This Jordan 3 UNC hit. Okay, and I'm looking forward to the UNC 4 that is set to release in 2021. This though, very simple. Remember I said it though, I don't know why. I said I don't like when they did with the, with the basketball, they switched the colors out. But with this one, you got this, the white and baby blue. You got the white and red with the Katrina. You got the white and orange with the laser. I got the laser in the back. Yeah, there it goes. Sometimes it doesn't stick the same way with me. I can switch it up. I can contradict, but hey, it's sneakers at the end of the day. But this UNC, Phenomenal, man. I mean, just phenomenal. The colorway, I love baby blue. Great springtime sneaker. They did a great job. The paint job was great. The elephant print was nice and low, kind of similar to OG aspects. The Jordan was embroidered thick, popped out 3D on that thing, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the Inspire tag on the inside. And this quality is A1. I mean, this is still like in a dead stock condition almost. I pretty much worn them probably one time. And that one time was probably for the video. But they're gonna get their love. They're gonna get their shine going into spring and summer of this year. So, number four, man. Let me know. I mean, if you comment anything, I would like for y'all to comment y'all top three or whatever. But if you're watching this, let me know. Like, yeah, Tony, I would put these UNC, the UNCs in my top ten. Even if you don't, maybe, maybe you put them at number ten. Just let me know. Do this. Do, do, does these make your list at all? I feel like this shoe right here is a shoe that a lot of us will have in common. This one right here, at least. As far as pickups, because it it was a shoe that like everybody can get their hands on. It wasn't like a really hard shoe, but it did sell out. I mean, who knows? I, I can't talk because I got it from Soul Play. So let me stop talking. Let me just be quiet. Coming in at number three, I think these probably made it to like three or two. I did a, like a top ten so far sneaker releases or something of that matter. I remember I did it, and uh, I think these was in that list or something. It was something I did top ten pickups. It was something I did, and I remember these being high up and them still being high up now in the top three pickups, sneaker pickups for me this year. As you can see, man, ones ran the show, and uh, I think we got we have we might have another. No, I think this might be the last one. Jordan 1 Midnight Navy. These released on November 14th. The retail was on these was 170 as well as make sure. Uh, I know we had seen the other silver ones that dropped earlier this year, but these were just straight wrinkly ball sacks split open with a slice of cheese. The quality was immaculate. Everything about it. They did a great they did, they did a great job on this shoe. And I think these actually kind of like these like these weren't that hard to get. What I mean by that was I remember seeing these on sites like sitting kind of like it wasn't like they weren't like sold out. 
And I, I see I'm missing my, my sleeve, right? And I've been I've been seeing a spare sleeve just chilling around this room. So I need to, I need to put him. Yeah, that, he's probably for this guy. I've been looking for you. I found you. But the Jordan 1 Midnight Navy, the Jordan 1 Japan, this was a phenomenal shoe that I've been wanting to get my hands on for quite some time. I'm not going to sit in line and say I wanted it back in 2001. 2001, I was like, I was 10. Yeah, I was 10 years old, man. I was playing like GTA 3 or something. Like, I don't know, PlayStation 2, like it just had just came out or something. Maybe I was even playing PlayStation 1. I don't know. N64, you saying WCW versus NWO. It's like, it's been a quite, it's been some time. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been some time. So, this shoe right here, though, overall, I was happy to get my hands on it. When I did get it, though, I love the laces. I love everything they did about this. There's nothing that they could have did differently. Um, it's a phenomenal shoe, and I'm so happy that they brought it back. And the way they brought it back, you know, that they didn't make it too insane, too crazy. And hopefully, you was able to get your hands on them. And uh, if not, shoes are like buses. Miss one next, 15, one coming. Shout out to Gucci Man, man. But he said... Girls are like buses. Miss one next 15, one coming. All right, I'm not playing it, man. I can't get my, my headphones. My headphones are downstairs. I was going to just look it up. Uh, Mario Breakup featuring Gucci Man, man. Girls are like buses. Miss one next 15, one coming. You feel me? Coming in at number two. This one almost didn't make, well, it was going to make the list. My bad. It didn't make the top 10 sneaker release list because I did not know if it was releasing this year. I honestly could take that. I, I kind of mad that it, people are going to go into that list and say why I didn't add it. But when I would make, when I made the video, the shoe was not, it did not have a release date. You feel me? So it's, it's upsetting. This shoe would have definitely probably been. In, I would say top five of 2020 sneaker releases. It, I mean, it is. It is that. I just can't. I would have to go back and like tell you. I mean, I guess I could tell you now. I guess I would take out whatever I put at number ten. I put J Balvin at number ten. I would take it out. Sorry, J Balvin. I put you in honorable mentions. I'll put this one at like number. I'll probably put this one up at number four. I'll put it. Ab I'll put it above the it, it, number five. Number five was a chunky donkey, and number four was the Dior. For me personally, I would put. I'll put it after. I'll put it at number five. I'll put it at number five. The Chunky Donkey, it beats the Chunky Donkey in my opinion, but the Dior one still had like a banger for it. Anyways, guys, number two for me, the Reebok question, Kobe. The Reebok question, Kobe, now is releasing on December 31st. Shout out to Reebok. Shout out to Jonathan. Shout out to John, my bad, John. Long name, Jonathan, you know what I'm saying, for sending this over to your boy and getting this in my possession. Now, one thing I'm gonna say that I'm kind of messed up on is I did not do a full on review and it was because I didn't know when these things were actually releasing. I should have probably did, did the, I, well, when I got them, I had heard they were releasing like in two, three days. So I thought I was late, but then to come to find out they pushed it back to Christmas, then to come to find out they pushed it back now to releasing on the 31st. So I'm a little upset that I did not get that review out. Um, maybe I can try to get something out this week. I don't know. I just have to wait and see how the time and everything goes. Cause all, you know, uh, New Year's is coming and it's a lot of stuff going on, but you can see these are still like, that's, I haven't even busted them open. I just did like a, I don't even know if I slipped my foot in these things, man. But on there it says, oh, I didn't even peep. Shoe Palace Promo, property of Reebok, 12 8 2002. I didn't even know it had this on the inside. Shoe Palace is getting these. 12 8 2002, Shoe Palace Promo, property of Reebok. And they got the question on it. So there's some quick news for y'all. I never even knew that was in there. So I guess this might be a shoe palace promo. I don't know if like the, the regular ones will have these or what, um, but we did get our hands in this possession. The Reebok question made the shoe that Kobe wore during his little 08 hiatus between when he left Adidas and before he went to Nike, he was rocking a lot of different shoes out there. And one of them being this Reebok question made, which was of the Laker colorway. It's also being speculated was said now, I recently saw on Twitter and whatnot that Kobe was planning on leaving Nike to make his own Mamba shoe. That would have been dope. Or I would have been, I was so, I was looking, I was so looking forward to seeing what Kobe did after basketball. His life after basketball. You feel what I'm saying? I feel like Kobe's life now was basketball. And that's all, it, like, that's what he was born to do. Like, his job, God's role in his life was to, you know, be born, do great things in the sport of basketball, raise beautiful daughters and the loving wife, you know, be there for them. And then once he was done with his basketball career, 
spend a couple of years with them and then be sent back home to heaven. Like that's how his life was. Like, that's what's kind of sad to me though. Cause I feel like he had so much more to offer, bro. He had so much more to offer the world outside of just basketball. I and mean, he was already doing stuff with his film, with his books, you know, with his Mamba Academy. His daughter was looking like the next Kobe Bryant, in my opinion, you know, Gigi was looking crazy out there. And it's just like, sometimes life just does not make sense, bro. It doesn't make sense. Cause Kobe was going to do stuff like, let me go ahead and say it. Kobe was going to do way, I mean, cause it's not even a bit, not even disrespect, but Kobe was going to do more than Jordan did after his career. Like Jordan is just chilling, smoking cigars, doing his thing, playing golf and making, and making sneakers. And I don't fault Jordan at all. I'm just saying Kobe was going to be on his Magic Johnson. You know what I'm saying? Magic like that. Like just out. Like you were going you were going to see Kobe, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I got love for Jordan. Don't get me wrong. I don't get to take it the wrong way. I know somebody will, but you get what I'm saying? Like Kobe was that guy that we were going to continue to see all these years doing great things and still just uh doesn't make sense, man. Just doesn't make sense. But we got the rebound question Kobe made number 2. Coming in at number 1, and let me go ahead and say this now. If I would have got the Grinch sixes, if I would have gotten those by now, if I would have had him in my possession, that would have been the number 1 shoe for me. And they're on the way. They should probably be here. Probably, I think they'll be here like on the first or something. They'll be here tomorrow or something of like that, man. I just don't. I just didn't have the time to shoot this record. I didn't have the time to do it, man. I don't think I'm gonna get them till the first. I don't like. That's what it is. So that's why they didn't make the list. But they would have been number one, and this shoe would have probably been number two, or the Reebok question could have been number two. I would. I would have figured something. Top three shoes would have stayed in that same possession. But they're not here, so we have to give a number one to somebody that's here, and that shoe is the Jordan Four. Off-white. Releasing on July 25th, retail price point was $200. The Jordan 4 Off-White, it did its job. I mean, you can't really ask much more from a sneaker, man. I mean, look at it. Just look at it. Rip stop, suede, buttery, pancake, pussy pop, everything you could ask for. Off-white, sale. Women exclusive, but it has men sizes on it. Or uh, no, I mean, did it have men sizes on it? Yeah, it does. It has men sizes on it. Shout out to Tito, man. He sold these to me for $600. These things are going for, I could sell this shoe right now on StockX for like $1,000. These things jumped up crazy in price. This is, in my opinion, the shoe of 2020. Virgil did it again, man. Virgil is still sitting on the throne. Travis Scott is doing his thing, don't get it wrong, but Virgil is still reigning supreme when it comes to the collapse. And with this one right here in particular, he did it, man. I'm looking forward to seeing what he does next year. If we get that bread four reverse or whatever, that off-white four that looks like the bread, I'm looking forward to it. You feel what I'm saying? The number one shoe though, the number one pickup in the sneaker, in my opinion, was the Jordan 4 Off-White. Go and check out the sneaker releases and see for yourself. So yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I love you guys, I appreciate you guys, and I will see you guys on the next video, man. We got bangers dropping left and right, and next week, we got the heat, man. I love y'all. Y'all have a great New Year's, because um, I think y'all might see me tomorrow. If not, you'll see me Friday. If I get those Kobe's in tomorrow, I'm dropping the video. But I don't have, I tech. <sighs> It'll be the 31st too, that's what's weird. I might get the Kobe's in tomorrow. If I do, I'm unboxing them ASAP because I need to have them in my hands. Like I can't sit and wait. So just remember when I made the video, I didn't have them. And if I, you know, yeah. Black cats might have to take a seat in the back burner, you feel me? But it is what it is, man. I have to do what I gotta do. I have to drop this video now because if not, it'll be too late. I love y'all, I appreciate y'all. I'll see y'all in the next one, man. It's your boy Tony D2Wild. Checking in, checking out, peace.